This video is about FRP rebar, the benefits, the challenges, and something that I foresee in the future. Concrete Crazies, my name is Tyler Lay, and I make these videos for you. In a past video, I talked about epoxy coated rebar. I talked about the challenges with it and why it's being banned. There were a ton of you who wrote in and said, Tyler, how about glass rebar or basalt or carbon fiber rebar? This video is for you. FRP rebar, fiber reinforced polymer, looks very different than steel rebar. There's got tons of benefits with it though. If we zoom in on the cross section, it would look something like this. Now that bar at the bottom, that white bar, that is the width of two human hairs. So this is zoomed in pretty far. Now these little bitty circles, these are fibers that are embedded in a polymer or plastic matrix. The fibers go in the long dimension of the bar and they're surrounded by these polymers. In the cross section, about 65% of it is fiber and the rest of it is this polymer or glue that just helps hold it together. And this is fiber reinforced polymer or FRP. Now the fiber, they can be made of glass or basalt or carbon and the polymer is usually a plastic that just helps coat these fibers and hold them in place. Now for comparison, I'm gonna compare basalt FRP to steel FRP in some of these numbers below. There are tons of benefits of FRP, but the most important one is that they're corrosion resistant. Outside chemicals can penetrate inside your concrete and they won't cause corrosion. Also, FRP bar weighs about one third what steel does. It's 4.5 times stronger and it's engineered to have great bond to the concrete. Now there are challenges though. FRP costs more, about 15 to 25% more. There are questions on how it performs in a fire. There's also questions about the long-term deflection or the creep of the bar. But the two things that I'm gonna talk about that are most important is that the stiffness is about half of what a steel rebar is and the strain capacity is about one fourth. Now these are very, very important. The stiffness, if it's about one half, that means the crack size of your concrete, the cracks on the outside are gonna be about twice what they would usually be with steel rebar. And the strain capacity, since it's so much lower, it can be a big deal in overload situations. Now to better explain this, we're gonna look at a graph like this. On the Y axis, I have something called stress, and on the X axis, I have strain. If you've never heard of stress before, it's the load divided by the area or the load normalized by the area. If you've never heard of strain before, it is the deflection divided by the length. This is what the stress strain diagram looks like for a steel rebar. And this initial slope, this initial area over here being very, very, very steep is extremely important. Now, if I look at a rebar inside of concrete and I start pulling on it and I pull on it enough to cause it to crack, well, once that crack forms, the concrete doesn't do anything anymore. And all of the load is transferred by that rebar. Everything is all about that rebar. So the stiffer that bar is, the harder it is to move it, the smaller the cracks will be. And this is why that initial slope is so important. Now, another parameter that's important is the total deformation. And you want your bar to be able to deform a lot before failure. Why? Because that gives people warning. That allows load to be distributed to other parts of your structure. And this is called ductility and is one of the most important parameters of reinforced concrete. Here's a movie of me bending a steel bar. Notice how I'm able to bend it over and then bend it back and it didn't fracture, it didn't break. This is important when your structures are gonna see extreme events like earthquakes or tornadoes. Look at this, look how much bending we're asking this concrete to take and it did, it took it, it had that much ductility and it allowed people to get out of the building and be safe. Now if I show a basalt rebar here in blue, notice this slope and the stress strain diagram is very different than it is for a steel rebar. The slope at the beginning, that very, very initial slope is about half of what a steel rebar is. Also, the total deformation of the bar is about one fourth of a steel rebar. Again, this can have a big deal when it comes to ductility. This is a less ductile system. Here's a video of me trying to break an FRP bar. Notice I was able to, and it didn't bend like the steel bar, it just snapped. 
And let's look at the close-up of the bar on the inside. See all the fibers? Let's just say I wanted to use FRP rebar inside my structure to prevent corrosion. Well, what else could I do to deal with these issues? I could use fibers to help keep the cracks that form small. I could make my members deeper and that would lower my stresses. And I could use higher safety factors and over design my structure, put in way more reinforcement than I actually need. But you know what the big problem with all this is? Money. This is gonna make your cost of your structure go way up. Now, how about carbon fiber? Isn't it different than basalt? Well, it sure is. Let's look at a stress drain diagram for a carbon FRP rebar. Notice at first, look at the slope. It's the same as steel rebar. And look how much stronger it is. Now, it doesn't have as much ductility. It's a lot lower, but look at that super high strength. There's a lot of benefit there. Because the slope is the same as steel, you'll get the same cracking performance as steel. And this increase in strength means there's a lower need for overdesign. I think carbon FRP has huge potential for reinforced concrete. But right now, in 2019, it's 30 times more expensive than steel bar. 30 times more expensive. Oh baby. That's expensive. Expensive. Expensive! Now let's be serious. I think carbon FRP has huge potential, but it's not gonna get used until the price comes down. How low does it have to go? I don't know. If it's about the same price of steel, it's a no brainer. If it's maybe two times more expensive, then I think it's got a good chance. But where the cost is now, it's just too high. But is there a better way to make long lasting concrete? I think there is. I think it's about making great concrete, making imperial concrete so outside chemicals can't get inside of it. And I made a whole video series about this. You should watch it. In summary, FRP rebar has many benefits over steel bar. However, the low stiffness and ductility make it challenging as a direct substitute for steel rebar in a lot of applications. I think carbon FRP shows amazing potential, but currently the price is too high. Hey, follow me on Instagram at concrete.tyler and thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you think you'd enjoy it and leave me a comment below. I'm always looking to engage with my listeners. Take care everybody, bye.